Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host uh, for this evening, and uh, bringing back to, uh, to you, uh, finishing off the Supernatural um, a, a, a month here. Um, we are uh, going on about uh, a director by the name of Steve Beck, uh, his feature from 2001 uh, called... 13 Ghosts, and this just so happens to be a remake of a 19... 60-something? Uh, 1960-something. Uh, Let's see. It, 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 uh, 13 Ghosts. Yep, 1960. Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, came prepared. And that was a film that was directed by William Castle. Um, and William Castle was very theatrical uh, in his filmmaking and uh, came um, and did something different. He brought a 3D element to his uh, films, and that's, uh, that's kind of what, uh, what this film kind of brought. In fact, I do believe that this uh, particular version was in 3D, but why don't I go to what IMDb actually uh, says about this film. Um, so when Cirrus Criticos, a very rich collector of unique things, dies, he leaves it all to his nephew and his family, all including his house, his fortune, and his malicious collection of ghosts. So um, I'm going to get first impressions here um, from every uh, everyone. So um, going over to uh, Brandon, why don't you tell me a little bit about your first experience with this film? Well, uh, I actually had seen it a while back. I remember when I had watched uh, the first Dark Castle uh, feature, House on Haunted Hill, when they did that remake. <laughs> I was enamored by the production company, so I would actively seek out each of their films, and I believe this one was their second release, which it was uh, eagerly anticipated, at least by me anyway. So I got to see it in theaters, and to me, I was just as hyped for this as I was for that one. I was prepared fully for what I was about to see because I'd seen House on Haunted Hill and that also really, in my opinion, set the stage. Okay. So to me, it was a great first impression. And when I got the DVD, seeing the extras, it just added for me uh, the interest level. Finally, seeing the original also, to me, helped. Uh, just a lot, just as well as it did for the uh, original House on Haunted Hill. <laughs> okay, um, going over to uh, Jake. Um, now, this was this a first time. Was this a first um, time for you? Yes and no. Uh, <laughs> this was one that when it came out, it actually was on my radar. Um, I think there was a lot of um, there was a lot that caught my attention, uh, being as I was at the time, uh, rather a big fan of both the um, of I, I enjoyed Scream and I enjoyed certain other things with Matthew Lillard in them, and I was a big fan of American Beauty, uh, no, American uh, Pie series. So some of the leads of this film were kind of, I was, oh, that, what is that? I may, I'm curious. Maybe I'll see that. And I remember distinctly the movie getting trashed on its release. So I have those impressions without having seen it then. I know at some point while I was at college, I saw most of the film. I could not tell you how much or how little I saw. I just have that memory of having joined some people while they were watching it, and I saw most of it, and I remembered a few things vaguely about it. 
And that was was it. that one of the watch parties at Catawba? Was, was that one what? Was that one of the watch parties you had at Catawba dorm? Well, probably. I mean, more likely it was probably just I wandered into the main study, you know, the, what am I trying to say, TV room. Because I lived in a dorm that had a pretty cool entertainment room set up. <laughs> but, uh, so I didn't see it again until, you know, a few nights ago. And, then, and that was the first time I know for sure I saw it. And one thing I seem to remember about the critical analysis was that it was kind of a mess. It was kind of a hot mess. And to be honest, the first, what, 10 minute segment, however long that segment in the junkyard is, the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm going, what the hell is this? This makes, mm-hmm. this is, this is nonsensical. It's, it completely put me out of the movie. But then the movie itself actually started. <laughs> and once it got going, I found it fairly interesting. Um, it's not my favorite movie by any means. It's deeply flawed in its, the way it's put together. But it was interesting. And, I, and, and I'm a big fan of Tony Shalhoub. So it's always uh, fun to see you know what he's got going on. So <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's go over to Dustin. Uh, Dustin, uh, what was your first impression of this particular film? Well, I first saw the. I first saw. I think maybe five, ten-ish minutes of this movie a really long time ago on TV, and I hadn't seen the rest. I don't think I had seen the rest of it since. Like I might have seen the entire thing once on Sci-Fi. but I had no memory of it, and so that's why I wanted to do it for the show. Uh, because a while ago, I found one of those weird Blu-ray two-packs. Like, it came with this and House of Wax, which I also hadn't gotten to see. And I'm assuming that's another Dark Castle one, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yes, uh, it is. And, Dark uh, Castle. Uh, it's Dark worth Castle watching did. because... Go ahead. I was going to say, it's worth watching because Paris Hilton dies early on in the uh, particular <laughs> movie. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyway, um, I the little, what I remembered of it was uh, I thought, oh, that's neat. And it's like, hey, it's Monk, because uh, I didn't know Tony Shalhoub's name for the longest time. Like he was just, you know, Monk. So it's like, oh yeah, Monk's getting chased by ghosts. What's going on? <laughs> uh, so that was my real first impression of it, and I rewatched it again. Uh, I think earlier today, earlier today uh, for our show, and you know. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I had a really fun time with it. So a lot of really elaborate effects. Like it had a lot of fun visuals, uh, even if the plot wasn't exactly what plot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, non-extant. <laughs> well, I had a very weird introduction into this uh, uh, this mo- movie, and I was uh, I was very much a fan. Uh, a fan. See, I got I had watched the original uh, before, way before I had actually gone to the theater and seen this. This was another one of the movies that my mentor uh, that was awarded to me by the state uh, because they thought that I was lonely. Um, they wanted to put me with someone who uh, who would excite me. So he, I had a guy who took me to movies. And oftentimes they were weird and strange and far from the norm and uh 13 ghosts ended up being the this adaptation ended up being that uh, one of those particular outings and uh yeah um i i was down with uh the uh, the whole whole story i loved the junkyard scene for some reason um i mean on the big screen there's just Nothing like watching the uh, the juggernaut like wa- uh, like walk slowly toward uh, towards you, especially when you're used to being taken up to like the first front row uh, seats, and and the monsters are like right the fuck there, um, right in front of you, and uh, yeah, um, I was very entertained with uh, with this adaptation. It's very close to the ori- original, uh, because uh, in the fact that you can actually see the ghosts through the glasses, uh, which you could 
in the original uh, too. Um, the thing is, you can actually see um, the film in some sort of fashionable 3D. It's actually its own thing. It's actually like the precursor to 3D that William Castle used. So to be able to redo that mo movie in a different way, in a modern sense, was kind of phenomenal for me. Um, and uh, the ghosts ended up having like uh, uh, incredible backstories in in, in the extra uh, uh, extras, which is why Brandon, I was surprised you sa uh, said that there was very little on the DVD. Well, to me, <laughs> those backstories were like a shit. Uh, so I ended up myself when I was like seventeen, sixteen, uh, writing uh, uh, writing poetry <laughs> about. Uh, inspired by the backstories of each of these ghosts so um yes, uh, so i'm guessing i'm guessing the blu-ray has the same extras as the dvd uh because the one that came in my two pack there's a 15 minute thing about each of the ghosts backstories and then there's like a roughly 20 minute making of and then there's a commentary so is that what's on your dvd too yep same darn thing so uh, so it really doesn't matter which yeah. one you get yeah, this, feels, <laughs> this feels primed for like a shout factory kind of a criterion well not criterion but a, like a, a scream factory or an arrow release of something I, like this. i would love an arrow or, release i think um house on haunted hill you said was another one right because shout factory did yeah, house yeah, on that haunted one did get one yeah shout did house, house on haunted hill and i wouldn't be surprised if we saw uh 13 ghosts and probably house of wax like next year because they've got like a lot of stuff like announced. Oh, uh, the way that, if I'm recalling correctly, the films that were released were House on Haunted Hill. It's it's actually got a lot that they released, but they went out of horror for a while. This House on Haunted Hill, uh, Thirteen Ghosts, Ghost Ship, and uh, House of Wax and Gothica, I believe, uh, was that main like. Uh, castle centric because they named themselves dark castle because they were pulling from that well yeah oh, i didn't know ghost ship was one yeah in fact uh, ghost ship was directed by the same director as this film so um you can see how i thought, uh, something, uh, I thought something felt kind of familiar <laughs> <laughs> that definitely uh, very beginning was uh, uh was very similar to some of the style that, uh, that was in this uh, this film uh, so, um, uh, Dustin, why don't you give us a quick rundown of the, uh, of the, uh, of the plot, and uh, we'll discuss it as we go. Okay, so, um, I can't remember how to pronounce his insane name, so I'm just going to call him Rich Uncle. So, Rich Uncle has a bunch <laughs> of these ghost hunter guys, like, they're Iris. in a junkyard, they're in a junkyard, and they're hunting ghosts like you would for, like, raptors in jurassic park like it's very much the shoot scene <laughs> uh, for jurassic park with a paralysis <laughs> ghost and the ghost manages to kill quite a few people before they like manage to trap it mm -hmm. uh, well, and, and, Rich and, Uncle, Rich matthew, Uncle dies. and matthew lillard uh, right before they catch him uh, 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 has uh, this all-out vision uh, of him uh, him actually killing like more people than originally plans uh, right right that was uh I, I was calling him dude from scream because he was in scream right yeah right yeah uh i didn't i didn't know his name so dude Isn't from scream yes, his name here dude from scream is like the head of like the ghost catching team like he has like psychic visions like if somebody touches him um right. and he he touches a rich uncle and sees like a little bit of foreshadowing of what rich uncle is planning to do with all these ghosts that he's been capturing. Uh, so anyway, uh, rich uncle dies and then it cuts to the intro is kind of like a backwards montage that gives Tony Shalhoub's family like backstory. Like it shows it's like footage of like his wife playing with his kids and then like through voiceover we hear it's like okay his wife died in a fire and you know their house burned down and they live in this like crappy apartment now with their nanny which they somehow can still afford despite being very broke uh, 
And anyway, so he, they get a knock on their door from Rich Uncle's lawyer, who's like, hey, you inherited his stuff. Come to his house. <laughs> and his house is basically... There's a movie called Glass Trap that I kept thinking of the entire time because the house is this elaborate, like, Rube Goldberg thing made out of, made out of glass with, like, spells to contain the ghosts. It's the Wonka Vader, except with, uh, 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 it has more rooms. Uh, <laughs> I'd say more puzzle box. It's, it's very much a puzzle box. I, I, I could almost see Wonka after he retires going into the hunt, ghost hunting business and becoming Cyrus. I could almost see that. <laughs> it's a combination between Willy Wonka and Hellraiser. <laughs> mostly, mostly Hellraiser. <laughs> well, what well, are you consider- talking about? Willy Wonka was Pinhead! No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. I'm just kidding. Ooh, where, where was <laughs> I in my... Played by F. Murray Abraham. There's a little bit of that Salieri vibe to him too. <laughs> yeah. Where was I? Where was I on my pseudo drunk plot giving? The glass house. Okay, the glass house. So, uh, like, they come to the glass house, and while they're there, there's you know, Scream guy is disguised as a power dude because he was trying to get into the house. Rich uncle, didn't, Rich uncle didn't pay him, so he's trying to get into the house to get his money, which is perfectly understandable. Um, the lawyer is kind of like, I don't want to let you in. And Tony Shalhoub's it's like, yeah, come in. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, they start to explore the house. And the machine, the house is like a machine for channeling like energy from these ghosts to open some kind of eye of hell thing. It was kind of they explained it really fast, like near the end of the movie. So it was like, wait, what? Burn them. Well, according to the story, uh, I'll pick up here. Uh, according to the story, evidently the uh, the book that this other lady has. Because uh, she, uh, uh, there, there's another lady that's involved that uh, you saw in the very begin- uh, beginning, and uh, she's involved in the sense that that she's she says that she's there to um, uh, make make sure that the ghosts um, get out of there. Uh, that uh, uh, so she's got all these explosives and this like fifth uh, fifth. Uh, like 500 year old book for, uh, that, uh, that evidently uh, several people have been killed just to have. <laughs> uh, um, she's introduced as someone who it's like, you know, trapping human souls like this is unethical. Like, I'm, I snuck into the house to free the ghosts, but there ends up being a surprise with that. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> anyway, the machine gets, the machine gets turned on and the ghosts are freed and. People start to die. Well, okay, the lawyer dies right. because he backs into one of the walls, like as it's moving. And one of the oh, things that's... people remember the most from this movie is what happens to him. Like he basically gets cut in half by like this glass, by the moving glass walls. It happens so fast he kind of doesn't realize. It's like, wait, I'm dead. Like, and his uh, and his body, uh, half of his body just slides to the ground and uh, you just see the mush of his skull and his brains. And his... It's, it's a pretty intense effect. <laughs> and later, and later, oh, yeah, that was... makes the comment that I guess the lawyer split. He didn't talk about it. Yes. That was a cute touch, yeah. I did, I did, like, the, I did like the cute, you talk about cute touches. You didn't really mention the lawyer. Uh, first of all, the lawyer comes on looking like he wants to like he has the same vibe to him i just watched some arrow episodes he has the same vibe to him that malcolm merlin has it's kind of this reptilian vibe of i would feast on your soul and and enjoy it sort of vibe and you know you know like uh, worse than a typical blood-sucking lawyer basically (laughs) He starts the machine by grabbing money. Cyrus had actually set the money on the trigger for the machine. This sort of Indiana Jones thing where when you move the artifact, it starts the trap. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was that was sure kind of fun. Was, 
I wasn't sure if that was deliberate or not, because, I mean, he had to have known, like, to turn it on, right? Well, what's interesting uh, uh, that you uh, uh, that you happen to mention the, uh, the Indiana Jones factor, because mm-hmm. the director actually had worked on the visual effects of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Oh. So. I can believe it. There were a lot of elaborate, weird traps in this. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, the lawyer oh, does know about the ghosts too. That's yeah, kind of he, a... knows, he knows about them. I don't know if he knows the purpose of the building. I didn't really get that. Was unclear to me. I, no. and I, I think the money was set there as a trap because whether it was the lawyer or Dennis or someone, if they saw a satchel of money like that, they, they were going to grab it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, and um, well, anyway, so the ghosts kind of wander around. Uh, as the as Tony fa- as Monk's family gets lost in the house, um, and then it's just, for a while it's just them, kind of them looking for the kids and getting attacked by ghosts. Mm-hmm. So, well, not necessarily a deep plot. To uh, to me, um, the uh, be, because the machine was set in motion, each ghost was uh, 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 as the cir- as the circular thing in the middle of the uh, middle of the uh, the thing. Each uh, uh, ghost was let out as uh, as each lever was uh, uh, was automatically um, let go, or uh, so as time moved on. Each ghost was let out, uh, let out, and while pandemonium was going, uh, going it's, it, it seemed uh, uh, like they were just ended up uh, uh, coming across the most uh, violent of the ghosts as they went on. I mean, even Matthew Lillard's character had actually had a premonition of his impending doom. <laughs> right. So... Um, yeah, they, what they kind of had bad luck running into like the worst ghosts pretty quickly. <laughs> what is there? I don't know of many people killed by the torso. <laughs> well, okay, the kid. So, um, Tony Shalhoub, Monk's. I'm just gonna keep calling him Monk. I'm sorry. Monk's son, um, uh, is in the, the basement. In this house. Well, he's in the. His son is in the basement. <laughs> Just kind of looking around when the first traps open, when the first containment things open, and he kind of runs into. He's got the viewers on because the everybody they had a scene where everyone was wandering in the house. It's like, oh, what are these neat looking glasses for? And they just like try them on like idiots, and then they just keep wearing them. And so, um, the son has them on like while he's just kind of messing around downstairs, and he sees like all of like the non murdery ghosts. <laughs> And uh, it, it, it was kind of an interesting the character. Bound, the bound woman and the torso are the two ghosts that he, he uh, d- down below. But, uh, but as he was as he was running through, you actually saw the juggernaut walk at the other end of the hall. And that first wa- uh, walk by, uh, by in the theater scared the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> um, uh, because. You know, when when it's larger than li- a, a life in the th- a theater, it's a little bit different experience. Um, <laughs> at least, at least when you're a- actually able to enjoy that kind of experience. So, um, but I think I saw this at the Oriental. <laughs> so, I but, saw this um, at the Crypt of Horrors. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually did see House of Haunted Hill in theaters, but that would have been the only one of this group that I did. But okay. anyway. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what what does everyone think of the family? Uh, they seem like a pretty normal family for the most part, just kind of dealing mm-hmm. with um, like the loss of a parent. Um, but the son, his son had kind of an interesting character quirk that they kind of don't have time for after they get to the house. But the, he seems, like, really interested 
in like death because he's he's like he's like what six seven and he's like trying to spell decapitation he's like looking at like crime reports it's like they found somebody without a head behind the dumpster and he's like okay and tony shilib's like okay yeah. uh, hmm. I think they really could have done more with that i i, I do believe throughout this because he's in a literal haunted house he should be like <laughs> jumping for joy as like oh my gosh i can see real ghosts you should be having a good time yeah <laughs> Yeah. And, well, he also uh, does disappear for a while, so that kind of cuts down a little bit on the time there. Yeah, the daughter. Yeah. The Go daughter ahead. in the very beginning uh, uh, seemed like she uh, uh, had taken over the mother spot, uh, spot because she was cooking uh, in uh, in the very beginning. Um, what, what do you guys think? Yeah, I agree with that. Well, um, yeah, definitely. She was trying to be like Although, the responsible one. Certainly. I felt like... wouldn't be their housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that was the like... weirdest part. Actually, wait a minute. That's a good question. Well, I need to look something up real quick. Um, like, what? Was... Yeah, it was. Well, I think she was like actually a nanny because don't they call her the nanny a couple times? Yeah, yeah they, they did. Was... Okay, and here we go. Okay, this I wanted to confirm this. Rodega plays uh, Maggie, who's the housekeeper slash nanny. And, of course, Shannon Elizabeth is the daughter. Rodega is one year older than Shannon Elizabeth. One year. And this movie, <laughs> it suffered from the same problem that American Beauty did. I mean, I, I want to keep wanting to say American Beauty and American Pie came out the same year. So it's like. It's like what? He just went mute. <laughs> I don't even think he's on. What did he. Uh, oh, he paused what? himself. You can do that? Apparently he can. What? Uh, um. Well, okay. While we're waiting, what the? If you can hear us, well, sign off and sign back on again. While we're waiting, <laughs> what the heck is American Beauty? Well, it American... is a evil, evil piece of cinema starring <laughs> that uh, evil person who uh, who I won't even name, as he goes through a midlife crisis and dreams of uh, having a underage relationship with a teenage girl. Uh, Kevin, Sp <laughs> Kevin Spacey <laughs> stars in that. Uh, ah, okay. He must not be named. He is evil. <laughs> well, I mean, he's he not of bag evil. Now. He is well, not evil. Well, yeah. He was K-Pax. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dave. Uh, he's, he's, he's pretty up there. <laughs> yeah, well, he, somebody, he wasn't... Somebody he wasn't the news. <laughs> He wasn't evil at the moment. Well, he wasn't evil at the time. Well, he probably was, and we just didn't know. Okay, um, I have no idea how this works. I, that didn't uh, cause any weird with the podcast, did it? Just, just, had a... just say your thing, man. They were saying something about American Beauty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 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 I uh, okay, so I I wasn't sure if any of that went through, uh, was recorded. That's good if it. Oh. <laughs> My point is that the da daughter looks too old to be in her late teens because she was too old yeah. to be in her late teens. Um, so yeah, uh, especially when the jackal attacked her, um, and they had to go for the uh, for the opening of the boobs. I mean, come on, uh, uh, that's total not teenager that's just yeah. it, that, that's just an 80s you know throw a uh, throwback uh, throwback you know <laughs> right um, okay but what i was saying was that that was one of the same things that distracted me in american pie was that shannon elizabeth was born in 1973 so she was you know definitely oh. not <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate um, as far as the casting, though, I did find one tidbit that I found interesting. I had no idea that she had Middle Eastern heritage. 
But uh, apparently she, F. Murray Abraham, and Tony Shalhoub make this the first mainstream film to have three Arab American stars, which is an interesting first. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. and I, re I remember uh, F. Abrams in another uh, made-for-TV film uh, that Sci-Fi put on. And it, and it was meant to be like a television ser a series, but for some reason, I remember it. It was called Journey to the Inner World. Uh, but uh, uh, but when I looked it up uh, for years, I didn't find it by Inner World. It was actually a version of Journey to the Center of the Earth. So, <laughs> But um, originally, it was supposed to be a television series, and F a a Abrams played an uncle that went into the caverns below and became the monster. Mm. Whatever, whatever. So I remembered him for that role. Oh, good times. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Right. Well, it's like he's been basically playing a variation of Salieri ever since Amadeus, but he's been uh, he's he's good at it. <laughs> yeah, he, he's definitely good at that evil vibe. Right. <laughs> at the devil may care look. Yeah. So to speak. All right. So, did we cover everything we wanted to on the plot? I guess we didn't really do the big. Uh, we also well, never did a spoiler big, warning. So. <laughs> well, I mean, anybody who listens to us knows that you know we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about spoilers. the interesting we're gonna talk about the interesting parts of the movie, and of course, it's gonna be spoilers. So, I mean, that's kind of our whole thing. Uh, is you know, like what we liked, what was cool, rundown on what happened. You know, so that's going to be spoiler heavy, um, <laughs> just by default. So I think people know what to expect, um, unless you're hearing us for the first time. In which case, hey, welcome, uh, welcome to the party. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. anyway, uh, back to my lazy recap, I guess. Um, so we find out Rich Uncle isn't dead. Uh, this was all a scam to get Tony Shalhoub into the house and have him basically sacrifice himself to the machine to save his kids so that he would become the 13 ghost and they can open like the portal to hell or whatever vaguely explained thing it was. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a good man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he clear, clearly is, is a family man. He really is. Yeah. <laughs> whereas, actually, he's awesome. whereas Cyrus has kind of a god complex going on there. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they hit you over the head of it pretty hard, but kind of, I guess. I uh, yeah. Well, in any case, in any case well, well, um, um, uh, it's also uh, revealed that uh, lady who was like, "We have to free the ghosts." Uh, she was like his partner in this whole mess. Right. And uh, this is where I get a little confused. So, the kids are like tied up in the middle of like this spinning mandala razor blade thing um mm -hmm. but the ghosts are circling around like to channel the power uh to do the thing and i totally missed what happens to rich uncle's assistant like she just kind of goes okay, away so, so um what happens is is um they are just about to leave the room and uh he double crosses her and and, uh, and uh, has her get stuck in a glass partition that just kind of squeezes her entire body. Oh, uh, my God. How did I miss that? Right, uh, right behind him. And um, uh, you can see her face just kind of go smush. Uh, so it's <laughs> it's kind of like... Uh, she gets a cure red? Uh, yeah, she kind of uh, gets hers in the end. So... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, she had a, she got a comment. She made a comment earlier where it's like, "I even killed that guy for you," because um, she had like a partner. You're not mad at me. Scene. You're not mad at me, are she, you? Like, slit his throat, and it's like, yeah, take that, you jerk. Um, anyway, somehow the nanny gets into like the control room and manages to break the machine, uh, which frees the ghosts long enough for them to like grab Rich Uncle and throw him into the slicer. 
Which uh, well, I, I actually thought that part was actually relative. that was pretty cool. Uh, kind of phony <laughs> looking CGI for when like when his like limbs and shit like fly everywhere, but man, it was okay. Uh, <laughs> during this whole mess, uh, sadly, we lose Scream Guy. He gets taken down by uh, all the ghosts have like names, so he gets taken down by the hammer and the juggernaut. Uh, mm-hmm. And at this point, we see his ghost. It's like you can still save your kids, and all Monk has to do is like leap of faith through the blades and, like, grab his kids. And so that's what happens. The machine collapses. Uh, one of the ghosts was his wife. And so mm-hmm. they can have, like, a little family goodbye mm-hmm. kind of thing. In fact, in fact yes. earlier, one, uh, one, uh, I, one of the things that I kept think, uh, thinking is when uh, the son was down in the basement, the mother was actually the first voice that the the little kid hears, and she tells him to get the fuck out of the basement, and he uh, just keeps on going. It, it, it's like, it, uh, do you have a? a do you, are you deaf? Go to uh, go to fuck the other way. You know, it, it, it's oh. it was <laughs> slightly annoying because. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, he, he kept on going, and it was like you. A stupid kid. <laughs> he probably had years of practice of ignoring that uh, particular voice telling him not to do stuff. So... Yeah, well... <laughs> yeah, well, um... In this case, listen to the little voice in your head, you know? I mean, Another there are doubt. moments that you do have to listen to that little tiny voice. I mean, of course, don't kill yourself. <laughs> The mention of Leap of Faith has me suddenly fixated on the Roman class crusade of the uh, jumping from the head of the lion. What was what, what was the exact penitent phrase? Penitent man will pass. Is that is that penitent that one? Man I thought, will pass. Oh, penitent man will pass was the blade part. Okay. Wasn't spell it? the hour. Uh, then the next one was spell. The uh, uh, spell, the letters of God, which was Jehovah, in the foot, in the in the foot, and then the of leap God. of, uh, and then the leap, leap of faith. That was uh, well, uh, where a leap of faith. Okay, he, ju- he just had to step right. off onto the ledge and believe. Right. I just, I was trying to remember that phrase. I, for some reason, that was stuck in my brain because of your. But I'm glad you mentioned it because, because uh, to me there is kind of a similarity, you know, in in the the be- believing that you'll be okay on the other side. Right. You, you know, uh, uh, the grass is greener in, in the pasture. You know. Right. <laughs> and then you can hear as he's like comforting his kids, trying to keep the blades off him. You could hear. You've chosen wisely. <laughs> I missed that. Right. Cool. Well, <laughs> you, you, you didn't exactly say. Uh, you didn't exactly hear it, uh, but you can imagine. Uh, you the, can night, imagine the night that doesn't the, come out and be the night. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, one but, kind uh, of cute phrase I did, I did hear in the movie that um, made me chuckle was... Uh, I, I believe one character did say something about throwing stones, did they not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monk was like, so the house is almost <laughs> entirely made out of glass. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, okay, nobody throw any stones after he <laughs> sees that and realizes it. Because <laughs> they're in a glass house, and it's like, ah, I get it. It's not so... that funny, but I get it. <laughs> Does anyone find it funny that, uh, that the ghost just kind of walked out? Yeah, after the machine is destroyed and Rich Uncle is killed, they just leave. <laughs> we I see mean, them uh, just like walk away, and it's like, wouldn't, oh. you, wouldn't you think that like maybe they might like float away or do some fantastical like little dance around or or well, kind of they kind of fade or, away. Don't as you they think left. that I mean, the, uh, some of them would have like stayed and haunted the shit out of them or something like that? You know, I mean. Uh, I mean, some of those uh, ghosts were actually pretty violent, and they liked violence. So, uh, right. to, uh, to me, well, if you like violence, you don't want to be stuck in one place. You want to go 
other places so you can do violence there. Yeah, but not single file. <laughs> Just deal with it. What's your haunt in <laughs> the ghosts were just like, well, we're calling it a day. And they leave in an orderly fashion. <laughs> <Call it a day. laughs> yeah, and then, of course, the jackal turns around and chuckles. <laughs> now, um, what, what do we think about the special effects in here? Fucking rad. That was, that's kind of the main reason to see this movie, just because it has... So much, like, cool imagery and, like, clever design, especially the set design. Like, the set design is amazing. Um, each ghost also has a unique design to, you know, what its backstory is, like, what its theme is. Well, and they even a lot have of their own symbols. They even have their own symbols. <laughs> I mean, in that book, uh, supposedly they had, like, these, uh, like, iconic symbols that, you know, uh, were supposed to mean what they were, you know, uh, which was kind of cool, too. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'll agree. Again, with the uh, the production design was pretty incredible with this one. They, it was clear that they put a lot of detail into it. And not to mention the aspect that it was a glass house. So filming it was not no mean feat. I mean, they would have had to be extremely cautious with camera angles and all that kind of stuff. And that that definitely takes, uh, not to mention reflections from the glass and all that kind of stuff. Um, I would say that in those areas, the production design and the cinematography, this was a really well done movie. Um, some of the other stuff, like the actual CG effects were good, but... You know, the the makeup was pretty solid. I mean, oh, you yeah. know, yeah, there were several aspects, and, and overall, I kind of liked the music. It, I wasn't blown away by it, but I thought overall it fit the movie. Um, so in a lot of ways, it was well made. Hey, yeah. little one. The editing kind of sucked. I believe in people walking. I believe in me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think actually that was one of the biggest criticisms the film was hit with was the editing. And I, I just, again, that whole junkyard scene just threw me completely out of the film. They could have found a better way to incorporate that into the story or else set it up better, you know? Just well, as it was, it was too jarring. <laughs> I actually didn't have a problem with the very beginning. Uh, uh, so I was curious as to. Um, why it went that way for uh, uh, for you? So uh, I mean, to uh, to me, it was setting up that they uh, they were doing this gigantic uh, ghost hunt, uh, and um, they had already captured the Charlie Manson ghost, which they had mentioned, and uh, um, I, I of course I didn't realize it was the Juggernaut until la uh, uh, la later that that they were capturing. But um, I, I, when I heard the backstory of the go, uh, 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 ghost, it interested me even more. And uh, th they actually showed a map of the junkyard. Uh, 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 so while they were there, uh, so, uh, so I noticed how big the yard uh, yard was. And uh, I hadn't seen too many places with junkyards uh, 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 that killed so many people in. <laughs> Actually, then... um, with uh, the junkyard setting for the opening of this, uh, it actually called back to Dead by Daylight uh, for me because one of the main, one of the original characters in Dead by Daylight uh, is called the Wraith, and he's from a junkyard. Like his map is a junkyard. Like he used <laughs> to run the crush. He used to run the crusher at this junkyard. Uh, but the junkyard was like a mob front, so every time he crushed a car, there was like somebody in the trunk, and he just didn't know. So he'd killed hundreds of people that way. Mm. Uh, and when he found out, he went insane and killed his boss in the crusher. And then he disappeared, and now he's a ghost. So uh, seeing the junkyard scene, it's like, oh man, I really want to play the Wraith when we get off the air. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, anyone else have anything uh, they want to talk about uh, about uh, special special effects wise, Brandon? Uh, I actually think practically the practical effects were the where this uh, shown more than anything else. I mean, the costume design. Watching some of the special features, you got to see. I mean, some of these people playing the ghosts had to be in their co- in makeup for seventeen hours straight. That's uh. That's a lot of sitting in the chair. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, a lot of those costumes, I mean, like the hammer, that, that was very complex. Uh, that was very elaborate. And they were they were pretty legit scary. I mean, they were believable costumes. So uh, I didn't feel like those were bad effects at all. And also, when you look at the house, I mean, a lot of that stuff, it kept, uh, kept your belief pretty well uh, with the effects that they used. And when you're supposed to believe that these are ghosts that are contained with spells on this shatterproof glass that was made into a house, and the house is not a house, it's a machine. So, I mean, that is phenomenal to think about for a moment, at least. I mean, it is elaborate to think about. (laughs) I don't know. I, I, there's uh, there's so much that I can say uh, say that I enjoy about this uh, uh, film, and it, maybe maybe I'm speaking more about this uh, film because I really really enjoy uh, enjoyed it, and really like every aspect of it. Well, aside from being kind of light on plot, I mean, there was a lot to enjoy. This was like this was like a fun, just like kick back and like watch it happen movie. <laughs> Like, it didn't feel slow at all. Like, it comes in at a fairly tight 90 minutes, and there wasn't really a lull or, like, a boring part. Uh, I, the pacing, I think, really helped it, too. So it's... I can't really say it's, like, an action movie, but there was a lot going on. Anyway. There was a lot, uh, there was a lot, there was a lot going on... Uh, on behind the scene uh, scenes and the, uh, and to, uh, to me each of the uh, showing each of the ghosts in what capacity they were supposed to be I, I mean most of them were a presence but some of them actually had to do something uh, 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 like the hammer and the uh, dung, uh, dung and, those, uh, uh, and the jackal uh, uh, seemed to have like the most to do but you got to see a little bit of each ghost, and, and uh, to, to me, uh, coming to life like that—that—that uh, that, that was awesome. Oh. Mm-hmm. And uh, I could see it. In, I could see that they could actually do something very cool in a three D effect. So, what was what was the original Thirteen Ghosts like? Did it have a well, similar premise, or? What well, was that whole um, thing about the original uh, uh, thirteen uh, uh, go- uh, ghost is, uh, I believe they uh, the family had acquired a house uh, th- uh, th- uh, through an uncle, so uh, 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 well, a uh, family member who was into the cu- uh, into the occult and uh, supposedly had trapped the uh, the go uh, or uh, trapped the ghosts inside the house for some reason and it, so it was a similar pro- a plot it's just it, it it had a smaller uh, a smaller set um one thing in particular is that uh, the the woman who played the wicked witch of the west um she uh, or uh, the uh, the one that dorothy dropped her house on or uh, not dropped her out uh, didn't drop her house on when she went to uh, went to uh, yeah. um, Margaret Hamilton, yeah, she played in the original f- film as like the dude's assistant, and uh, there ended up being like a plot involved that he was trying to scare the family into finding the fortune that was in inside the house. So that one ended up being about fortune, and, and didn't have this thirteen ghost plot in it. So it was a Scooby Doo almost... episode. Well, it did have good ghosts in it, uh, and I 
thought that the cool. I mean, Castle was known for a lot of his cooler aspects, such as he was able to talk about. I mean, he was able to do things with the glasses to where he would say, if you looked in one color of the spectrum during these scenes, uh, you can look in at this uh, at it this way if you believe in ghosts, and this way if you don't. And it was kind of cool because if you looked at it in one way, you wouldn't see anything. But if you looked at it in another way, you could see the ghosts through the uh, 3D glasses, which is uh, kind of a, a neat mm-hmm. aspect of the film. I yeah. thought it was a Actually, very genuinely uh, haunting and, uh, and well-done film for its time. I and, think uh, so as well. D- Dustin just put an amusing thought in my mind, though. You could say that this one is definitely a Scooby-Doo episode, considering that Shaggy's in the movie. It's just the, uh, it's, the, it's one day when the acid trip turns bad. That's <laughs> They got a bad batch of Scooby snacks. Yeah, he just uh, he's just off his medication for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Sh- yeah, Shaggy no, no. was pre- uh, uh, Shaggy was pretty medicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shoot! They even had a. Uh... Well, no, I'm going to stop that thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I I like that you um, said that about uh, William Castle because William Castle was that way with his audience. He was very entertaining. Uh, he was the kind that would actually uh, make sure that he'd go into the, the- uh, he his theaters because he did have theaters of his own. His theaters would have the actual bu- uh, buzzers uh, 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 connected to the theater seats. Oh, like, just like the Tingler? Into- yeah, like the Tingler. In fact, he, he directed the Tingler. So, oh. he also directed the original House on Haunted Hill. Mm-hmm. So. Which is why I think they uh, Dark Castle started do- uh, doing some of these uh, f- uh, features. Because uh, William Castle was kind of like one Roger of the, Corman, uh, kind of like a Roger Corm- a Corman, ex- uh, 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 except he. Um, to me, I think that he was better in aspects of horror, uh, in the Gothic job. So, mm-hmm. it, it, uh, to me, I mean, there are some people who don't like the original House on Haunted Hill, Haunted Hill, Hill but. I enjoy it. Well, that oh, yeah. castle film that we did a couple months back was pretty fun. That uh, Sardonicus, that was a fun one. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I love uh, Mr. Sardonicus, and uh, whenever you think of someone smiling, just remember. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I remember <laughs> Castle's introduction to that one, and what was the other one, Homicidal or whatever it was? Yeah. It was like, he he just uh, he was very amusing in his screen he was very uh, cheerful <laughs> and yet deeply macabre but cheerful. <laughs> it was weird. It was yeah, like, it was like uh, Alfred I, I Hitchcock was before like, every single one of his episodes. What was that? Alfred Hitchcock before every one of his episodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, in any case, uh, does anyone else have anything else to add uh, special effects wise? Uh, no, no. We covered it. Yeah. I think we covered it. And I think we like... covered the music just a little bit too. So, um, didn't we? I strangely didn't notice any music. Um, well, which I mean, it definitely had. Like, I remember, I guess I remember like a lot. A... Flashy, dramatic theme for the climax, but I don't remember a whole lot of other music, which is kind of weird for me. It, they use a lot more of uh, almost rock, uh, well, th- rock and R and B aesthetic for it, uh, and a lot of that tends to. And of course, I felt like the music was better used in the uh, House on Haunted Hill remake. Uh, tell you the truth. I want to see this House on Haunted Hill thing now. Like, I, I need to track it down. That was one of, 
that was one of the more that was one of the stranger Shout Factory releases because usually uh, something comes out from Shout Factory and I can spot it and I can find it with the slip cover, you know, for a month or so. Um, I don't think I I think I saw House on Haunted Hill once on one day and it hasn't been back in stock anywhere ever since. And when I try to like pick it up used, it's like four or five more dollars than most of the other shout titles. So I'm wondering if it got like a like a limited print run or something. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's still like thirty bucks. Yeah, and that's kind of weird. Because usually <laughs> they usually they go to like twenty two or whatever. I mean, I I get them like downtown where they're like twenty three. Sometimes they're just a flat twenty. Um. Some places have them for like 25, 27 ish, but that one just has always been kind of expensive, and I'm really curious why. I do want to see the other Dark Castle films, like for sure, as soon as I can, though. So, like when we're when we're done tonight, I think I'm gonna wrap up what's on the Thirteen Ghosts discs and disc, and then maybe jam House of Wax. <laughs> Although, then again, I I don't know what I'll actually do afterward. So I've been weightlifting again, have, so I may need to go to bed. But they I don't all have a similar vibe. Here. They all have a this kind of serious like tone to them. Like so, it so it's so they're all kind of like Thirteen Ghosts, Ghost Ship kind of feel to it. Yeah, yeah. So the, they have about the same feel to them. Like I say, I use Gothica as the uh, last of that because after that they go into Rock and Rolla, which is an action. So they do do The Hills Run Red, and they also, oddly enough, they produced the new they they produced the newest Predator film, which is odd. <laughs> oh, that's strange. That like, is strange. The Fred Decker, the Fred Decker Predator. Yeah, two thousand eighteen. I I had saw that it was weird that Dark Castle oh. was producing. I personally enjoyed that. Like a lot of people hated it, uh, but I I had a really good time with that movie. And I I got to tell Fred Decker that, like, in person, it's like, hey, uh, I liked The Predator. Like, I know the ending wasn't your fault. They pretty, <laughs> much, they pretty much, like, forced him to, like, change a bunch of stuff. And so that's why the ending of that movie just kind of comes out of left field. It's like, wait, what happens? So. Uh, talking about left field, I just noticed uh, another film that had the same IMDb rating as 13 Ghosts. That Dark Castle was involved with. I had no idea they were one of the producers on Suburbicon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Suburbicon? Was, that, uh, that wasn't was it that recent film. film? What's that? Wasn't that a, a somewhat recent uh, film, too? A very recent, uh, 2017. That was uh, written by the Cohen brothers, directed by George Clooney, starred Matt Damon, Julianne Moore, and Oscar, Oscar Isaac. So. <laughs> That was uh, with that pedigree, I had to see it, but it was a dark movie. I guess uh, having Dark Castle involved is part of the reason. <laughs> but, yeah. It's I also did Apparition, see? but I haven't heard much about Apparition. Uh, and I, I see looking I at Apparition. House, I see looking at House on Haunted Hill that Chris Kattan was in it. I forget. Does oh, he yeah, die? Yeah. Does he? He does, but it is probably one of the most hilarious roles I've ever seen Chris Kattan do. Okay, well, as he, long as he died. He is, he is funny as all get out in that film. And I never thought I'd say that about Chris Kattan. And yeah, uh, I, don't think I, I don't think I'd ever see that. I don't think I've ever quite seen a character like that from him. So uh, it was fun. Uh, I actually I actually liked his character in that. <laughs> Mm. Well, I think we got lost. Uh, so I guess uh, <laughs> wrapping up uh, our score discussion, uh, I think we probably covered everything we had to say about that. Um, anybody have any favorite scenes? We all have favorite scenes, right? My favorite scene, if I had to choose, um, and I'll go first, is the uh, is the beginning intro because I, I, I love how it's kind of an interesting mix of Sound um, and uh, and imagery of the, of the breakdown of what happened to their family, and uh, it, just the way that, that the montage is put together, where you, you hear the sounds in the background, 
of 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 them playing uh and then the, their mother dying and the, uh, then the crying and and, uh, and then uh some of the agony that the father is going through it was just kind of like um very emotional uh, to uh, to wa- uh, watch especially uh, especially since some of the effects show some of the burning of the house to the uh, it, 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 and then showing up in the apartment oh. that was a really um, effective montage Sean. that was that was just so nicely done like <laughs> i don't think words quite do it justice just how well it's done like you have to see the movie for yourself i think to really appreciate that scene as much oh yeah because I I just don't think we can really praise it enough. So it's like wow, I had never seen like a flashback done like that before, and it's like wow, that's awesome. Uh, who's next of a favorite? I'm still trying to decide on my favorite. <laughs> I'll go ahead and jump in because I got oh. Go ahead. I'll, say, I'll jump in because I kind of agree with Dave. Um, although to clarify, that wasn't the opening scene. That was after the junkyard. Because at first I was like yeah. Uh, no, because like I said, for me that was uh, that made that scene even more effective. Because you see this train wreck that's the opening scene, and then you see this, and you're like, oh well, that's that's so much better. <laughs> what the hell's going on? But um, yeah, I really did like that opening sequence, and I would say certain scenes that showed the mechanics of the house were pretty cool. I mean, the house was cool. So certain yeah. scenes that really showed that off were really good. Um, so those would probably be my favorites, I guess. I think another one of my favorites was uh, was when Matthew Lillard's character realized what the fuck the house was. I mean, just the uh, just finally realizing that uh, that uh, where where he w- was those cont- uh, those glass containment cubes that he captured the ghosts in are in the fucking house and he's like oh shit <laughs> they are the house <laughs> uh, I had a fa- my favorite scene that uh, really goes along with the uh, house itself was that first scene when you see the uh, lawyer grabbing um, well basically grabbing the uh, cash and uh, well uh, activating the house so you get to see all of the cool things like all the house changing and transforming as it goes which is uh, pretty impressive I mean that whole that whole area is impressive and of course then you get to see the asshole lawyer get uh, cut in half too so that kind of uh, also helped <laughs> yeah, fun, mm-hmm. part of, part, fun, fun part of the setup on that is like he puts the glasses on as he's walking like through the hallway to get to the money, and he's like tapping on the glass and like making fun of the ghosts like as he passes them by, and then that, when they're freed, he's you know just all panic. He's like, uh, yeah. Hey. Uh. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, that's the other thing is it kind of gives a good introduction to them as well. Um. Uh, which uh, which is great because you get to, I mean you were introduced to the one the juggernaut at the very beginning but it also gives you a uh, introduction to some of the other uh, ghosts which is kind of cool. Uh, I think my favorite scene I think my favorite is so it seems like a lot of the rooms in this house in the house are kind of designed for like individual ghosts uh, like relating to like their backstory. Uh, mm-hmm. Or at least that was the vibe I get I got from this scene. So, um, Monk is like, "Stay put," to his kids, and of course they just wander off like the minute he's in another room. And mm-hmm. the daughter she finds like this upstairs like this like elaborate like women's bat women's bedroom with like this huge bathroom, and she's just kind of like messing with stuff. It's like, you know, playing with the bathtub. You know, just kind of, like, indulging in it. It's like, oh, there's perfume. She's, like, trying stuff on. Um, and because she doesn't have the goggles on, she can't see... I, I don't remember I don't remember the, the slashed female there's, ghost's name. There is an instance where, uh, where uh, the camera goes to the glasses, and you peer through the glasses, and you see the world of the ghost. 
that yeah, is. That's, it, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's what like, I was getting. That's what I was getting at. I don't remember. Um, wasn't that the one they called the Angry Princess? Correct. Yeah. And so anyway, had, her ghost had just been released right as the lawyer had picked up the money. Yeah. So, uh, mm. like the daughter, like she's got the bath water on and she's just kind of like rinsing her face off just it's like ah yes i get my own bathroom to myself and she can't see that the angry princess is in the bathtub which from ghost perspective like the entire bathroom is covered with blood the tub is full of blood and the princess is just glaring at her and like clutching her knife and it's oh shit something bad's gonna happen uh, Tony Shulu comes and is like, there you are, come on, we gotta go, like, before anything can, but it was, it was really tense, and, like, I, I thought it was pretty cool, uh, yeah. just seeing, like, how different thing, like, each one of their little habitats can be. Oh, yeah. And actually, that, that is one thing that I want to mention that I, I will concede for the film, is that they did a pretty good job of setting a high level of tension, and maintaining it when they need for the most part because it was you definitely have that sense of well, well what's going to happen what <laughs> you know or uh, uh, uh we're fucked kind of a moment too you know uh, right. when they when they when matthew laird uh, goes to the uh, that jackal cage and realizes that it's not there he's like yeah <laughs> uh if the jackal it, it, it has escaped, then we uh, we uh, we have no promise of getting out of here <laughs> alive. <laughs> so. It's like the Charles Manson of ghosts. We're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he well, panics the, a lot. Yeah, the background is uh, really cool. Uh, uh, when you see the background of those characters, like the jackal. Mm-hmm. I mean, all that stuff was good. There just wasn't... Uh... You had to kind of go into supplemental material to get, like, the full story on all, all, on all the ghosts, and that's definitely well worth doing. Like, I think I might watch that 14-minute thing, like, again when we're done here just to get a better idea. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, just to kind of keep the names straight so I can, like, pay more attention when I do my commentary watch. So. But, yeah, uh... I guess in closing, you know, even though I guess it has some pretty crap reviews, you know, as just a piece of, like, entertainment with cool effects, uh, you know, 13 Ghosts is definitely worth your time. And there are a lot of characters you probably won't forget for a while. <laughs> Granted, they're all the ghosts, but, you know, that's, <laughs> that's why we're here. I mean, 13 Ghosts, you get you get a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Actually, hey. technically, how many ghosts are in this? Twelve. Well, 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 uh, there are thirteen. There are thirteen ghosts because uh, uh, even Matthew, Matthew Lillard. Lillard's uh, character becomes a ghost in the, in the end because he's encouraging mm -hmm. Tony Shalhoub's character. Mm -hmm. So well, thirteen uh, ghosts. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to. No, actually suss that out because it's like wait a minute there are 12 and he needs to kill monk to have one more ghost wait a minute so there were only 12 go so it's like, nope matt lillard 13th ghost. <laughs> I, really, I think what he technically needed with the 13th was a willing sacrifice i think was the way they put yeah. it yeah so like care hard or whatever it was Technically, four people are killed in the house during the course of the movie, and none of them were really a willing <laughs> death. Yeah. Uh, no. So, um, but I thought that uh, I thought that that ending was fairly cool, even though I, I I wonder what the ghosts would have really done if if there is uh, if there are such things as ghosts. Does anyone believe in ghosts, by the way? No, I don't. Uh, not really. Well, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess technically I guess technically the ending of this is kind of abrupt because all the glasses in the house breaks and the family is fine 
And the nanny is just kind of wandering around. It's like, you know, I've had enough. I quit. No. It's like, <laughs> and then it just ends like on her. And it's like, that was kind of. Yeah, that was a weird. very abrupt ending. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, she was a weird character. Like she, she ended up being important, like to destroy the house. But for the most part, all she did was just kind of stand around and scream. <laughs> it was a comic relief. Yeah, I you gotta think have so. at least one of those characters in most horror films. Of course, mm-hmm. they uh, uh, they always did, uh, did in especially the late uh, late nineties to early two thousand stick that random. Uh, African American in there, uh, ju- uh, just to have uh, have the complete ensemble to be uh, unified. If if you get my drift, to uh, I don't uh, know. Some, I don't know. To, to to me, sometimes it, see, it seems like in order to fulfill a, a, a being diverse, that's what Hollywood did. Mm. Uh, I think it. I think it worked better in Deep Blue Sea. Like that guy was cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Almost definitely. Now I want to watch like Deep Blue Sea. I want to watch too many movies. I need to be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well. anyway, uh, I think we should probably end it here, guys. Yeah, We've been uh, well, definitely. Uh, and. Uh, uh, when when you uh, folks are uh, are at home and you are watching Thirteen Ghosts, do not turn the lights off and do not put the glasses on. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want. Uh, we can't stop you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did you did I, did you have uh, any last thoughts there, uh, Brandon and Jake? Not really. No. Uh, I think we covered it. I thought we accidentally cut you off, so I just wanted to be sure. Well, in any case, Dustin, why don't you uh, tell us where you're from and what you do? Well, I'm a horror collector living here in Milwaukee. Uh, I spend far too much money on cool stuff I find around town, and I show it off on my YouTube channel, uh, The Crypt of Horrors. And my Instagram, also the Crypt of Horrors. And I typically hang out on Twitter a lot, under, you guessed it, the Crypt of Horrors. Um, But I've been censored for two by arguing with people of the right-wing persuasion when they say stupid things. So I won't be on there for a couple of days, but uh, by the time you hear this, I should be back. So I've been temporarily banned in solidarity with Art the Clown. So... Yeah. Follow me on Twitter anyway. I'm coming back. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, going over to Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what, uh, what, what you do? Oh, uh, well, uh, I am Septum San of Septum San versus the World. Uh, we are a YouTube channel that concentrates on physical media and uh, the love of physical media collecting. We do various videos, such as uh, well, collection videos um, about what's upcoming and on release, as well as some various other videos. This week, uh, I will be diving into the video. I'll add this to it, to it once uh, it gets there. Okay. Well, in any case, uh, we, we have some interesting stuff. I also do some work with... Uh, in- movies galore uh, occasional videos here and have been uh, working on the uh, upcoming stuff that we are going to be seeing and uh, we do have the votes in we have uh, taken information from uh, ver- polls from various peoples around the Facebook verse and uh, have tried to gather opinions big and small and we have our four films, plus a fifth that uh, will be decided at a later date uh, uh, with, uh, by Katie Cadaver. Uh, the four films that we will be focusing on are uh, in the order of uh, most votes to least votes, which I think will work well. Uh, uh, 
Hocus Pocus, being the least votes, will be the Halloween uh, video we'll be watching on the 29th. Okay. Uh, then uh, from there, Dawn of the Dead, going backwards. Uh, uh, let's see. Sorry, Scream, going backwards. Then Dawn of the Dead. And then, of course, next week, we will have the 1977 horror film House. Or House uh, as it is a Japanese film. Okay, very, I will have to very find, interesting month. Ahead. I will have to find my copy around here somewhere. <laughs> uh, but uh, in any case, um, oh man, I have to go buy more Criterion stuff. <laughs> There's just a lot of it. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, Jake, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Oh, wait. Jake? I just keep saying he's on mute. <laughs> Talk, damn you. Uh, let's see. I'll try Am to I see. Back? Yes. Right. yes. You are back. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jake. I'm frequently guest on Septum Sin versus the World. And, uh, well, like you said, we've got a lot of, uh, we have a weird video of weird stuff that came out, what, at the end of last week? That's oh, kind of oh fun. Yeah. check it out. And <laughs> all kinds of exciting pickups at the moment. They've got a big sale at one of my places of employment, so there have been a lot of fun new pickups lately. Um, so, you know, I also do my own uh, YouTube channel, Code of Jake, which is dedicated to nature and the natural world. I swear I do have a couple videos coming soon. I just have not had time to get them up and ready. And uh, but it will happen, <laughs> and my hub page is likewise almost never gets updated, but once in a while, there may be something coming. <laughs> Alrighty, and uh, my name is David Streggy, and uh, I run Inside Moses of Glor uh, Glor with a lot of you, uh, as we have experienced. Uh, a lot of different films along this film journey, and uh, next week, like uh, I said, uh, uh, like Brandon sa uh, said, we are start, uh, uh, boy delving into the uh, Japanese uh, side of horror with House. So stay tuned for that. Um, I thought it was more of a fantasy. I it. We'll figure it out. It's never been it's clear. It's a supernatural uh, haunted house film, so... <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, like, a couple people that, like, aggressively hate it, but I have no idea why. It's yeah, very weird. <laughs> unless they're talking... Unless they're talking about, about the other house. Yeah. They could be mistaking it with the American house, which is a, a, a fun film in its own right. And a weird one in its own right. All right, uh, and uh, I, I will be eventually getting two interviews out. I finally cleared some space in my computer to finally uh, uh, get back to some of my interviews that I've uh, in, uh, interviewed and archived. So I have two to get out and put together and edit and. Uh, I just recently cleaned my entire room, so now it's organized to the point where I can look for things uh, for the, uh, 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 so thanks to my mom, love you, uh, so in any case, uh, Wait, you can come pick up more of your movies from me. I have to get, uh, uh, I just have to get some cash order, in any case, uh, Th uh, thank you for listening, everyone, and uh, have a great evening, and uh, look out for some more cool uh, video collection uh, videos from my end as well, since I'm going uh, through some unboxing videos and uh, whatnot uh, in my collection. I have some more cool stuff that will be showing up um, within the week or so, so... Definitely keep a lookout for that. In any case, enjoy your evening and don't get too many chills. 
Good night. <laughs>